Good morning, everybody. My name is Kyle Houchins. I'm a techno trainer for McNeil, and today I wanted to show something a little different than I normally do. Um, this is Rhino 8, or the whip for Rhino 8, and if uh, you haven't picked that up yet and you are a version 7 user, um, you can grab that from our website on the downloads page. Um, and I've been playing with something recently that I wanted to show that um, I think is going to be interesting for everybody. Um, I had a conversation with Steve Bear, who's one of our genius developer, math programmer guys. And he's working on this thing called Test Fancy Curves. And if you haven't heard of this yet, which I didn't until recently, if we say test fancy curves, which is a test command, and we're going to enable them, and we're going to change the taper thickness to 4, and we're going to change the taper position to 0.5, which puts it right in the middle. When we draw curves, they look like that, which is kind of cool, right? We've got a little thick fin going on here. It looks a little bit like a brush stroke. And that got me thinking about sketching in Rhino, which is something that I've wanted for a long time. And, um, but there's an, an interesting door has opened here in the fact that Rhino has had in the standard palette, all the way back to like version one, I think, has had this tool, which is sketch on the left button and sketch on surface on the right button. And if we make, I'm using a Cintiq monitor, and if I open the Wacom tablet properties and I create a Rhino specific um, uh, profile, and I do that just by clicking over here and I can go through the system folder and find the Rhino EXE, and, um, and add this as a tablet property, I changed the tip from click, which is what its default is, to right click, which is what you would do if you were using a mouse, right? And what that did was that took the sketch tool and turned it into, just drawing curves here, turned it into a sketch tool which is really kind of cool. And so this makes, first of all, you can see the taper in here, um, makes kind of beautiful curves. A um, couple caveats. This is a fixed thing. You'll notice that the thick point of the curve is dead center on wherever the center point of the curve is, right? And so on this circle, right, there's an end and there's an end, so if we go around here, that is going to be the thick point of the curve. And that, as for now, is not adjustable, it's not pressure sensitive, anything like that. And this opens up a, a conversation about, you know, how that works and all this kind of stuff. And I, and I want to I wanna kind of preface all of this and say this is all super work in progress -y. Um Today is December 8th of 2021, so if you're watching this video two years from now and you're like, nothing's developed, <laughs> nothing's changed, um, or everything's different than in this video, it's, it's, yeah, it's entirely possible that everything's going to change. This is, this is like day one, you know, clean sheet project, you know, kind of stuff here, so go easy <laughs> on your judgments of all of this, because it's all all up in the air right now. I'm trying to kind of find the way along the way. And this is just something that I've kind of been playing with and trying to figure out if there's anything here. Um, so the other caveat is you'll notice that this sketch tool is kind of continuous. So as I draw, I do things like this. You'll also notice that if I try to undo, nothing happens. I have to escape and then undo and watch what happens kills the whole thing, right? So 
this is a limitation right now. This is something we're talking about trying to add and undo to the to the sketch tool feature. But I just want to make you aware of this: that if you draw a curve and you decide, "Oop, I don't like that one," and you want to get rid of it, you have to escape, you have to select, and you have to delete that one, and then re-enable the sketch tool and keep drawing. All right, so that's cool. And that is something that I think is kind of useful at this point. Now, the other thing that's interesting is if I then put on my, we live in a world where 3D sketching is now a thing, and I say, okay, I want to draw a shape that looks something like that, and it's got kind of a profile here, and then maybe it's got like, a little cross section like that and I go to let me escape and I go to one view and I now get a dynamic construction plane and this is something that's been in since 6 it's kind of a not a very widely known feature but it's but it is there and what I'm going to do is I'm going to use one view and I'm going to pick and pull this out and then I'm going to go to my top view. And as I get, you'll notice that the construction plane is in world top right now. And as I get close to the top construction plane, I'm going to hold down shift and control. And you'll notice that it snaps to the top view, right? So it's locked in this top view. I'm going to grab the bend tool. And I'm just going to go... I've lobbied to change the name of that to the NERT tool, but nobody buys off on it. So, um, control shift to get back into perspective view, and I'm going to grab this guy. I'm going to pull it out a little bit. I'm going to go as I approach top view, hold down shift control, and it snaps there. I'm going to grab bend again, and I'm going to NERT it over here like that. And I've got the makings, shift control back into perspective, and I've got the makings of a little thing, right? And then I made a button here, you can't see it because I didn't put an icon on it yet, but I made a I made a mirror X, mirror Y, so if I just click this I get a 3D shape. Now, I can look at this then and roll around into front view and I can see my profiles here. So if I go back to sketch and because one view is snapped into this front view, I can say, well, maybe I want a profile that goes something like that. And then I'm going to grab this, and I'm going to just mirror Y it, mirror X, mirror Y. Let's see what happens. Oh, wrong one. Mirror Y, there we go. Control shift back into perspective, and I've got the makings of this little 3D wireframe. All right, and we can say, all right, well, I'm starting to see something that makes sense here, all right? So what if we were to turn this into a little vehicle and we say I'm a vehicle nerd, so. Um, and I start just drawing some circles and I copy paste and I shift drag just like we do normally for Rhino. And I come back to perspective mode. See how that shift control drag kind of gets me in and out of Rhino, in and out of, you know, perspective and orthogonal views kind of quickly and elegantly without having to like go down here and click tabs or go over here and do this or that or the other thing. It just kind of lets me motor around here and I'm going to Shift, Control, Click, Snap back into an ortho view, and I'm going to grab these, drag, tap, Alt, scale this up a little bit, and then I'm going to align. I've got a gumball relocate snap. I'm going to just align this with snappy dragging. I can see that my ground plane is going to be something there. Maybe I'll take this entire thing and I'll set it at the origin. And the thing that starts to happen here is we can now start to generate and develop and experience forms in 3D 
but kind of sketch form, right? So let's just copy these guys over. And I can say, okay, well, now I start to kind of understand what the volume of this thing looks like. And if I go to top view, I can say, okay, well, what, what kind of shape am I going to try and pull off for this thing? Does it have, like, some kind of, like, Coke bottle shape in here? Is it an open wheel? Does it have, you know, some kind of fairing that sticks out? Um, does it have you know, a nose, taper, or something like that. And this brings up an interesting point. You can see how much coffee I've had this morning because my curve looks like a old Charles Schultz drawing when he was starting to get old and his hands shook like crazy. If I throw Move UVN on this and I just smooth in the, let's see, I gotta grab points. I'm going to grab all the points except the start and the end point. So check this out. Oh, that's better. <laughs> Goodbye, Folgers. <laughs> Goodbye, Folgers hands. <laughs> and I can straighten that kind of stuff out. Now, ideally, as this tool develops, we would have things built in. You know, maybe there's something built in where the sketch samples um, less you know, has kind of a lazy mouse feature or something like that. But let's let's take this and say, okay, well, we it, it's slapped down on world top, so let's try and figure out what we're going to do with this curve. So I'm going to go back to this view, and maybe what I'm going to do is change this a little bit. And then bend just makes really nice stuff. And I kind of dig the simplicity of how all this starts to kind of work together and you know maybe there's maybe there's more to this maybe there isn't maybe this is dumb maybe you know everybody's like this doesn't make any sense to me and you're wasting my time that's fine that's what that's what exploration is all about and that's kind of why I'm putting this out there so that you can see some of the things that I've been thinking about. And so if we do something like this and we say, well, and by the way, if you don't have snappy dragging enabled on your gumball, right click down here and change this from smooth dra dragging to snappy dragging. And then snappy, then gumball will respect all of your O snaps. I run my O snaps disabled and that allows me to do things like I click on the curve. Gumball is in the bounding box center of the curve. As I drag up, I can whole hover over the end of this curve and the bounding box center of that curve is going to snap to the end of this curve and then that way I know they're kind of sort of kind of aligned and maybe what I want to do is I want to rebuild this to only have four points so that it's cleaner and easier to deal with and I can grab these two points and then I can start playing with shape right maybe it's got a shape like this and then I I with the help of Pascal I built a little tool here and if I right click and hold down shift and right click you can see that I built a straight line degree three changer and this is the this is the code for that so if you just copy and paste this there's a space here there's a space here and there's a space here. There's also a space right here. In in this type of diction, in this command line diction, a space is is interpreted as an enter. And what this curve allows you to do is draw a straight line, and I'm just going to draw a straight line with two points. But what it has is it actually rebuilds and has four points on the curve. At least it should. Oh, I picked the wrong picked the wrong side of it. This is new to me too. Right click on this, drag here, drag here. Now I've got a degree three curve. It's a straight line, but it's a degree three curve, and that allows me to be able to do this kind of stuff, which allows me to kind of like do traditional kind of wireframe building. And I can start saying, okay, well I can start to see how this form develops. And maybe what I want to do is I want a different shape in here and so I'm going to use an interp curve as opposed to 
a control point curve, right? Here's control point, here's interp curve. Interp runs the points through your location, right? So if I grab a control point and I snap here and I snap here and I snap here, I get this shape. Interp, I get here, here, here. I get that, right? Because the curve goes through the point. So it's two different things. And I think actually this is the shape that I want instead. So I think the interp curve is probably going to get me where I want. So I'm going to get rid of these. And you can see that, you know, your industrial designer training starts to kick in and you start saying, okay, well, I'm, I'm starting to see what this shape looks like. But I'd really kind of like a cross section right through here. So I'm actually going to run a new construction plane here. I'm going to use the vertical option and I'm going to just hold down shift and that's going to put a construction plane right there. Now the one thing about one view, you'll notice I moved it and I lost my construction plane. Um, one view is kind of aggressive right now and that might be something that we need to adjust but if you place this plane and I actually kind of like this for right now, if I don't rotate the screen and I go from here, as I snap and draw I can say that curve is going to be right on that construction plane. And if I undo that and say I don't like it, I can change, whoops, I can change and say, okay, well, this is going to look more like that, right? Now, as I rotate, one view is going to put the plane right back where it came from, which I actually kind of like. Um, because it's it's kind of you know there and then it's gone and I don't really have to do anything um, I have to do a little adjustment here so I'm gonna actually grab this point and you know for those of you who are looking at this going well this is not very well defined and this is not it doesn't seem like it's a very well developed or elegant tool at this point you're right <laughs> I am making this up as I go because this is a workflow that is kind of in Rhino right now, but it hasn't been developed because we haven't thought about it before. And I'm kind of just finding the way along the way here. And so, yeah, all of the rough edges and stuff that you're seeing, you're 100% right. This is not defined and this is not developed and we're figuring this out, which is one of the reasons that I wanted to show this, because our users are super awesome, like seeing new stuff, and like helping us figure out what kind of tools work best for you. And so you can start to see, if I take this and I mirror it over, I can start to see the beginnings of a form developing here. Now the cool, another cool thing about this is let's say we wanted to start doing a little bit more development here. Um, we can actually come to the sub D menu and one of the cool things about these curves is they are actually just regular curves. So if I did something like this where I took sub D loft and I let's just go nuts and go through all of this and I adjust the shape segments and I'm going to bring this way down. I'm rolling my mouse and then I'm going to change the divisions. Actually, I'm going to leave the divisions as they are, and I'm going to allow corners to happen, and I'm just going to go bloop. Check it out. I start to get some sub -D forms that I can throw materials on, and everybody's going, what's wrong? What's going on with the ground plane? I'll get there. Settle down. This is R&D. We're making stuff up. I don't have it all figured out yet, but let's fix that. So let's change the ground plane and let's snap it to the bottom of that. So now you can start to see, okay, well now I've got some 3D shapes that are starting to develop. And what do those mean? And what do they do? And how does that affect my overall development? Now, one of the things, let me open up one that I already worked on a little bit. And so this is this is something that I kind of threw together yesterday for a demo. We'll ignore that part. And 
you can see that when you get down the road on this, it starts to get a little messy, right? It starts to get a little, a little hard to understand. Um, some views are better than others, like this kind of makes a lot of sense. And something like that might make a little sense. There's a command in Rhino that's been here for a long time called show zbuffer. Um, one of the things that we're thinking about is, oops, let me do the suppressed version. And if I invert this, all this is doing is pulling the depth buffer from the, from the OpenGL depth buffer from the graphics card. But check out this effect <laughs> where it starts to get, you know, more focused here as you get closer to the camera and it starts to get lighter back here. And I was talking to Jeff Lasor, who's one of our display devs, and I was like, okay, can we take this information and Steve's fancy curves and can we chocolate and peanut butter those together and get some kind of adjustable version of this that makes, you know, you can see the, the anti-aliasing and stuff on this is terrible because it's not designed to do that, but we might be able to take this information and overlay it on the wireframe information and get this kind of effect which starts to look really cool because we're getting detail closer to the camera and we're fading away farther away from the camera which is which is kind of neat and so my thought is that if we take something like this right and we were able to get this working um, you can now start to pick out shapes and lines and stuff that make sense that you would want to emphasize and so you know what do we do do we take a snapshot here and and do we do we throw this do we take a, a screen capture and do we throw this into something like sketchbook pro or procreate or something like that and do paint overs mm -hmm. that would be a super awesome way to get some presentation art really quickly right um, do we um, throw all of this stuff on a layer and do we say this is a new layer and we change the color of this layer to light gray and we assign everything from here to here and the Z buffer, we have to shut the Z buffer off. And do we lock this? And now this is an underlay layer. And we start doing, we look at shift control click to get back into an ortho. And do we now make a new layer that's black? And do we start saying, okay, well, now I'm starting to see something here. Um, do I then start coming in here and saying, well, this is actually the shape that I want and then this is actually the shape I want and then you know and then start refining right and 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 working on this and starting to do you know kind of like a traditional overlay process and stuff like that I don't usually when I do these videos I don't usually come in like you know hey wouldn't it be cool if <laughs> You know, uh, this is a little bit of um, early version 8 kind of thinking, right? And this tool palette up here, I don't have this in a form that I could share it, but basically I've got sketch, I've got interp curve, I've got single line, and then I added this in order to get my, my you know, this tool where I can go boop, and I get four points that I can then mess with which I find super useful I've got circles because I'm a car nerd I've got bend um, but also things like twist cage edit you know I would assume most of the UDTs would work on this stuff because it works on curves so why wouldn't it I've got um, C plane three point C plane I've got set C plane origin which is nice because you can just move the C plane around like that you know and then one view as you you know if you set the C plane and I kind of like this and maybe it gets annoying the longer I use it but if I set the C plane here and I draw something 
and I go, you know, draw, and then I move, the C plane goes back to where it was. And so if I want something in a specific location, I can do a three point C plane and I can say, okay, well, I want this C plane to match here. And now I'm going to draw something right there. And then I move and it goes back. But you can see that that, you know, if I would have aligned that carefully and picked one, two, three, let's try that again. Let's do it. Let's try and take the sock out of success. <laughs> um, so let's snap here and there and then up there. Now when we draw, this should be a little closer. And then I move. Yeah, so that's better aligned. So so that three point C plane allows you to do, you know, some pretty pretty crazy stuff as far as aligning. And then bend allows you to add your shape really pretty easily in a really effective kind of way. And maybe within the sketch tool itself we add an undo. Maybe bend is part of that. I don't know. Um, maybe bend and rebuild is part of that. Maybe bend and smooth is part of that. I don't know. This is this is all conversations that I'm having with myself and I guess now anybody who watches this video. But that's kind of where my head's at and I wanted to throw this out there and see what people think. I'd like you to try it and see how it works for you and and let's continue to have a conversation about something that I think could be a really cool feature for V8. Um, so that's about it. That's about all I have for you at this point. So give it a shot. Test fancy curves. One view. Those are the two, two commands that you want to uh, play with on this. And then build yourself a little sketch toolbar. And if you find other tools that you like, um, post them. Let, let's let's have a conversation. There's a thread on the forum. Let me grab it. This one, 3D sketching, check it out. Um, this was my first attempt. We've gotten better. <laughs> As we've learned, it's learning. The other thing that's cool about this is, uh, and I was I was doing some experiments where you can actually take a model that's already done, dupe curve, which is the command D U P C R V, the edges, join them all, and then overlay it over a over a model for presentation stuff. And you can see that this this little you know it gives you these little tapery kind of curves which I thought were cool and then um, I did another attempt at it as well where I added silhouette and a few other things there's some discussion going on about how all this works but check this out 3d sketching in Rhino check it out it's on our discourse page which is discourse.mcneil.com and if you're a version 7 uh, owner right now you can log into the whip which is here downloads right here it's the Serengeti build so if you have a version 7 key that you own hit this um, and then enter your key and you'll get the whip and you can start playing now one thing that I want to point out um, you're gonna wanna help check for updates on the whip often because this typically updates about once a week or so um, and this stuff is gonna be developing you know fairly rapidly uh, if I have any say in this. But for the meantime, give it a shot. Let me know what you think. Is this cool? Is it not? Is it something that you would use? Is it something that that you wouldn't? Um, how are you using it that I'm not seeing? You know, I come from a very product design, car design kind of heavy background. I'm not a jeweler or an architect or a boat builder or anything like that. Is there stuff out there that, that you know, folks who are outside of my realm of experience are going to find that this is useful and if so please share it throw it on that forum post I think that's where we're going to kind of aggregate everything and then have a conversation with the devs and let everybody take a peek at that all right so that's it that's all I got for this I think it's kind of a cool feature um, 
or could be a cool feature. It's not a feature yet. It's kind of a, it's kind of a, a, a brain salad that I'm I'm kind of throwing in the air right now and trying to figure out what what is uh, what is useful and what is not. So um, that's it. Have fun. I'm Kyle Houchins, tech and trainer for McNeil. Go make great stuff. Thanks. Bye.